Hey, so, uh, what's going on, YouTube? This is Shadeness99, a.k.a. Shade Canfield, a.k.a. OS3 Canfield, or whoever the fuck you know me by. Kind of tipsy drunk right now, looking at OBS. It says my microphone is recording audio. The thing is that I'm using my AirPods. I'm in a place where there's no one around me, so I can actually talk loud and be obnoxious or whatever. And, like, it's just, like, I, I can see that my audio is recording, but I can't hear anything because AirPods are weird. And, oh. Alright, that's why I was just reading a message there. Yeah, so, uh, this audio is recording, and I'm obviously going to get to hear it in the future once I'm trying to edit, but I can't hear myself talk, and I can't hear the in-game audio, so I hope that it's not that loud. If it is, I am so sorry. Not really, but I am so, so sorry. Anyway, last episode, we were on episode fucking 13, or is it at? Where the fuck is it at? It's at episode 13, Resurrection. It is ranked five pentagons. That's how powerful it is. Five whole pentagons. Not four, not six, but five. And I beat it three times. Uh, we're going to go on to chapter 14, which is light and dark. I feel like I'm going to be going against an OP wave of elves. Which means I'm going to cry. And I'm going to die. And I'm also going to cry. So chapter 14, light and dark. Oh yeah, there's going to be the lore. I get to read the lore drunk. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. Doing his album. Fuck you, lad. The human faction was a mess. Oh, you don't fucking say. Cities crumbled and burned in flames and compassed the already darkened skies and darkened moods. <sighs> uh, you know what? Fair. You know, uh, like, I'm sitting here thinking, like, yeah, I'm, uh, the, the sky is dark, everybody's dying, but you know what's important? I'm fucking upset, right? Like, I'm pissed. I'm, like, I don't, I'm mad. It's dark. There's no sun. It's probably cold. And I'm pissed. So, I'm glad that they mentioned that, because, yeah, that's, that's realistic. Too many soldiers have been lost by too many, and too many consumed. You won the war at a heavy price. Oh, actually, yeah, I did win the last battle. It was actually kind of a slaughter, though, except for that one bro. It's the humans, and I got my butt touched. But other than that, yeah, it was pretty, pretty good. I wouldn't say there was a heavy price. In the end, the resurrection was successful. The human archangel had awakened. Standing at the height of three castles, its shadow towering over even the largest of orcs. One blow, oh, the orcs are pretty fucking, the, like, what's the biggest orc? The biggest orc is probably the, the, the rock-throwing fucker, a rock fucker, and the stone fucker, and, you know, this angel's pretty tiny in comparison to him. I mean, fuzzy fucker's bigger than he is, right? One blow from his sword sent even the strongest paladins flying three days and three nights. It would have been funny if it said something like, uh, sent even the strongest paladins flying three days into the future. And I just want to, like, visualize an angel hitting an, an, a paladin with his attack and sending it up into the sky, and, like, he doesn't land on the ground until after I destroy the enemy castle. <laughs> like, he lands on the ground, like, what, the, what, where am I? <laughs> what day is it? <laughs> but okay. Angel Knight. The human archangel is awakened. The holy wars have been won, but the powers I fear are not enough. In the northwest forest stands an ancient tome that unites dark and light mana that can unlock every magic and powers available to your forest guardian. At what point did the writers of this story get as drunk as I am right now and just think, you know what, fuck it, let's just add a fucking tome, right? And that, that shit is powerful, right? And now we need a forest guardian. Fuck the angel, the angel is cool, but forest guardian. And then the producer, who was high on cocaine, was like, Forest Guardian, bro? That shit sounds fucking amazing. Let's do it. Let's do it. And in the infernos of the northern mountain, chained by the king of hells, the, c the canine of flames. I don't think that's how you use the word canine. Cerberus. Oh, a three-headed dog. My brother and I will each lead your troops. Oh, this isn't dialogue, so what? My brother and I will each lead your troops to those areas to unlock the hidden powers. May our angel guardian watch over us. This sounds awesome, but I'm too drunk to understand. It is so good to see you after a long time, brother. I'm glad to see you, but I'm afraid we must go our separate paths once again. I thought that the quote-unquote brother was just some random dude that I promoted to be a commander. Like, I thought that's what happened. Under the name of Colza, a name I don't know, let us do our best to reignite the lights of us, sons of destiny, and both of you shook hands. And both of you shook hands as you departed once more. This should be its own thing. This shouldn't be a part. Okay, so I'm sitting there talking to my buddy, the Rebel East Street Commander, and as I'm talking to him, I say, and you both shook hands. Like, I'm talking to him. This is dialogue. And you both shook hands as you departed once more into separate ways. He looked at me confused and said, why are you talking in the third person like a narrator? And I said, because the writer doesn't know how to fucking distinguish dialogue from narration. And you were both led by the angels back to the forest. 
am I gonna fight elves? What the fuck did the elves do? Oh my god, they're still going, please. The forest guardian led you deep into the forest through the tree. I thought we were looking for the forest guardian, so we found him now? Alright, well, fuck it, man. Ugh. Led you deep into the forest through the trees of illusions. I'm still recording audio. Yeah, I am. Uh, into a ragged tower that stood in the heart of the towers. Tower in the towers. That's, a, that's an incest shit right there. Covered in vines and moss from age, one can still see through the ruins that is this tome-held powers. This, that English is bad. That English be good. Angel Knight 1. We've re oh, the angel was with me the whole time. I can just imagine, like, casually walking through the forest with a fucking angel. And I'm just a human, and I'm there like, so, uh... How's the weather? <laughs> how's the weather up in heaven? Does it, does it rain above the storm clouds? That's what I'd ask. Does it rain above the storm clouds? We have reached the tome, and I confirm that there are ancient texts inside, but for where? I sense unease. I smell unease. It smells like shit. As do I, all soldiers at arms. So I'm basically surrounded by two gods. And true to their words, as you stepped into the territory of the soldiers, the ground shook and from the towers emerged elves, ancient elves, elves that have long since been dead and cursed forever to guard the ruins, protectors of the ancient tome. Oh, I guess you gotta make it to where I can fight elves somehow. Oh, continue. Elf protector, for what reason do you trespass upon the forbidden ground? To reignite the sun's destiny and to awaken powers, fighting against the rising shadows. You would think the elf protector would recognize a fucking forest guardian and realize it's friendly. You know, you wouldn't question him, but, you know, whatever. To enter the tome, you must, you test our powers against us. If you are worthy, dark and light powers will unite, and you will be given ultimate elven powers. Fuck yeah. If you are not deemed worthy, then your body will be dragged into our ranks to guard the towers forever as a cursed guardian. Do you wish to proceed? Didn't know that, uh, all conversations amongst gods were, uh, fucking video game yes or no prompt questions. I shall take the risk. Very well, your courage will be remembered. I'm sure it will, you know, among the dead community. Oh, fuck, okay, we're actually doing this, alright. Arrow time. It's arrow time, everybody. It's weird not hearing game audio, but according to OBS, oh, you can't hear the game audio either. Oh, well, that's interesting. Why can't y'all hear the game audio? Oh, you know what? I'm not going to question it. I'm just going to go ahead and put a song in the background, and y'all can listen to music this entire time. That sounds more exciting than, uh... That sounds more exciting than the game audio anyway, TBH. Uh, so, 48,000 HP on this castle. We're going up against some buff-ass elves. These be some strong elves, alright? These be some... These be some tough elves. As I say so, they get absolutely obliterated by my arrows. It's not even a challenge. So, Laz, I've been thinking about making that sort of, uh, that game with you, and obviously you're going to be the only one watching. I still haven't figured out a name. I kind of like this concept for a castle. Like, I think it looks cool that you can see all the different parts to it. But I also like the idea of it being, like, this huge thing in the background. And it's just, like, you can kind of just get a sense for its, like, massiveness. And you kind of get that with the trees kind of spinning around each other. And I'll admit this is a super awesome design choice. The curling up trees with the leaves and the mountains in the background. But I like the idea of, like, your castle being this this, um, this massive creation, right? And, like, it's just it's so grand. And all your troops look so small next to it. Like, I think that's such a cool design choice. I'm so ambitious for what it'll look like once I finally make the clouds. I don't think it's going to look as realistic as this game. But I think that it has the potential to be nearly as good. And, like, you can see the city in the background. Like, ah, oh, this is a, this game is inspirational. I think, I think it's really cool. I really like the design. I like how the characters walk. I know it probably took a long time to animate. And obviously this is pixel art, but it's just so small that it looks like it's not. And unfortunately, I don't have the time or patience to make anything quite like that, but... Oh, fuck, I need to get an arrow upgrade. These guys are getting a little bit fucking hungry over here. And, like, guys, I know that you're not very motivated to make a game right now because, like, college and shit, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna get started on it, and I'm gonna lose my motivation, because that's what you normally do. You get ambitious, and then you kind of just lose touch of what you want to do, right? You know, motivation's one hell of a drug, and it's something that not a lot of people can afford. But, like, man, I would, it would really make my day if you could figure out a way to make at least a prototype of that game, just so I could see it and, like, experience it. Because I really do think Epic War is a fun game. 
And like just right now, just me playing this, just me doing this right now. Like there's an elf protector here. He's about to get fucking pooped on, dude. Like he's dying. He's a bitch because he's so fucking busy dragging this big ass sword around. Like I'm not even worried about you, dude. Get the fuck out of here. But this game is fun. Like I genuinely enjoy playing this. Like it's an experience. And while I may not be very good at it, <laughs> it's like this is something that like I'd love to play more of and I'd love to see my own art with the characters running towards me and my characters running towards them and, and like I said with that whole idea of like a multiplayer construct where this is our castle right and it's that big epic castle and then you can use your arrow keys to come look at the enemy castle and it's like an enemy castle and you can see their troops coming out because if you're playing against another real player you're not playing against just a, a computer right you're playing against a real person and I think just the idea of like there's troops coming out of this side and then you have your troops coming and you actually have to like out strategize your opponent like I think that that would be such an awesome idea for a video game and like I know that you're gonna be like hard on motivation but I know you've made these types of games before and I know that you're really gonna like get a kicker out of it and you know I, I'm obviously talking right now and, I'll, and there's not a whole lot to talk about because I'm just I'm buying upgrades and I don't really want to cut this out because I think interesting dialogue is interesting right so, I think it's also important to, to, to mention this is my first time being drunk in any sort of sense of the word. Uh, I, I, I'm a bit of a tipsy boy right now. I'm kind of got the, the big mighty tipsy on me. Uh, I, I'm aware of what's going on though. Like, so that's why my commentary is like really legit right now. I'm, I'm, I'm aware, but like, I just kind of want to talk about some shit while I'm here, while I'm getting the rest of these upgrades. So like... I'm gonna be I'm gonna be leaving soon, and I'm not gonna be able to record this game unfortunately because this game is uh, online, and I won't have internet while living aboard a ship. Sorry to say, but that's just how it's gonna be. Uh, hopefully, I can get the rest of these episodes out. It is a bit inconvenient for me at time. I do have a busy schedule, and uh, my my girlfriend is gonna be coming out here sooner than later. <laughs> oh, excuse me, I'm only gonna be with her for like a month, so I'm gonna really be spending time with her. So I hope you can understand me doing that. I do enjoy playing this game, I don't ever get the idea that I think this game is boring, it's just that there's other things in my life sometimes that come up that are more important to me than this game. And, I mean, like, I understand that same kind of concept comes with you in building a game, but I just really hope that you can find that kind of motivation, because I know it's kind of like your dream to be able to create something that people can enjoy and prosper from, and like, right, that, like, that's, I think that's a dream come true for any, any amateur game developer. And obviously, lads, you have the potential to make something amazing like this. Make something as memorable as the Epic War franchise. I think you have that potential, man. You just, you get started on it, and then you start thinking, like, man, I gotta fix this code, and I gotta fix these bugs, and there's so much shit I gotta do. And you lose that motivation. And, you know, in the Navy, it's kind of that same sort of deal. Where you get that motivation, and you're like, man, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna get all of this work done, and then life kind of just hits and it starts beating you down and you start losing that motivation and you're like, man, I don't want to do it anymore. Like, what's the point? No one's going to play my shitty game anyway, right? Oh, also, apparently you can hear desktop audio now. What the fuck happened? Apparently, I guess I'm not going to put background music in. Who ya OBS studio and not working well with the AirPods. And, and, like, I get that shit, right? Like, you lose that motivation, man. But you gotta... Like, ain't nothing ever come easy to know, but the people that succeed are the ones that have that, that, that lapse in judgment, but they realize there's things more important to them than motivation. There, there, there's things more that, that didn't make any fucking sense. I'm sorry, I'm drunk rambling. There's things that are more important than giving up, right? There's things that, like, that are worth it. If you truly are ambitious about it, you'll get over that lack of motivation, and you'll be able to make something that's as cool as Epic War 2 something that's just memorable that people can play and you don't have thousands of players and it's not going to come easy. You got to be ambitious. You got to work for it, man. Get pooped on, dude. You got to work for it, man. You got to you gotta want to have it. You know, and I want to have it. I have that motivation. I know that it's not so easy coming on your end, but like, I, I feel that. Like, I want to, I want to like, I want to make something that we can like look back on in a couple of years and be like, yeah, I did that, right? Like, like we did that. We made that. We made this thing together. And, like, I've known you for a long time, Laz. I've known you for, like, three fucking years, dude. I've known you forever. I knew you back when you were a little shit, you know? And you still are a little shit, but you're, like, 
you're a mature little shit now, kind of. You're more mature than I am. I, I ain't gonna act like you aren't. Like, Jesus, I wish I could have some of the, the sense that you have sometimes, some of the control that you have. I envy you, man. You, you got life so much better than other people. And, like, you got the potential to be amazing, but you just kind of give in to your own, like, doubts sometimes, man. It's depressing because, like, ah, dude, you just, I see so much in you, and I want to, I want to be, like, your art developer. I want to be the person that can sit down and say, yeah, I sat down with last one for, like, I sat down with last one for, like, 10 hours, and I worked with him, and we figured out how to make a video game, and we actually did it. Like, I want to be able to say, yeah, I did that. You know, like, that's such an interesting idea to me. Like, I want to be able to sit there and say, I helped him make a video game. And we made it. And it looks amazing. It looks well made. It looks polished. It looks like it's complete. I want to be able to do that. And I know you do too. I know that you want to make a video game that people will remember. I uh, it's gone wrong remastered. The one that we played afterwards with the amazing art update. That was good. That was amazing. It was a beautiful game. Nobody ever once commented how bad the art was. And the game was well put together. And if you look at like the original High Gone Wrong compared to that, it's just such a such a change. It's such a difference. You can tell that genuine effort and heart was put into it. And that's what that's what ambition honestly is, man. It's just like this urge to want to be and to do something great and to create something great just for the sake of being able to see that you did it. People don't have to like it, right? You just have to make something that is beautiful. I think that's what you'll see the beautiful game. I think that this thing is awesome. I love the little animations. I love the little tidbits. I love the little hand waves. I love getting my ass kicked up every day. I might joke about how I don't like it, but I do. I enjoy sitting here and watching my troops get pummeled by whatever that's a black dragon, not to be racist or anything, but that's a black dragon. Oh, I was about to cut my butt. Really? Take a fire. Okay. I'm going to destroy the earth. Do it. 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 I can't finish making this black dragon. It's too difficult. It takes forever to do it. And I keep making mistakes. 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 I was like, this game is so hard. How can I beat this game? 
and then I played the game again when I was older, and I was like, oh, this game's not that bad. This is actually a pretty easy game. And I know, Labs, whenever you played this game, you played it whenever you were younger. Yeah, and you still are young, but, like, when you were younger, you played it, and at the time for you, it was crazy. And you're probably sitting here looking at me playing now, like, how the hell are you playing so well? Like, how did you just beat this boss? Like, that dragon had 12,000 HP, what did you do? Yeah, oh, it's just like... I guess when you're older, when you're a little bit drunk, you kind of have that sort of sixth sense, and, uh, 50,000, I need 70,000, one more level, I think. You know, and I, I might as well just get into this as the next plan, I'm gonna keep talking anyway. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep doing my little chat chat, chit chat. Uh, and I might, I might, I might finally run out of things to say, and I'll just cut to when things get interesting, and, like, you know, I'll just do that, you know, I think, Laz, I think, Laz, I think you enjoy just sitting here watching me play this game, and honestly, like, there ain't nothing wrong with enjoying that kind of stuff, I know that you kind of get angry sometimes, because you'd rather sit down and watch me play Epic War for 50 minutes straight, and, like, You'd like, you'd rather sit here and just watch me and have a good time instead of doing your college work, even though I know you're on vacation right now. And, and I know that a lot of times you think to yourself, like, why am I even getting this college degree, right? Like, don't be honest with me. You sat down and you thought to yourself, like, why the fuck am I getting this college degree for? <laughs> I want to make a video game. I want to make something that people enjoy. I have an ambition, and it's not this college degree. And I know a lot of, everyone has that kind of, like, oh, my God, why am I doing this for a moment? But, like, it's kind of like that, man. Like, you've made it all the way there. You're one semester away from getting a bachelor's degree, dude. You know what that means? You're, you're going to have a fucking easy life, dude. That's crazy. Like, you're going to be living a life that I can't live. Because I don't have a degree. I'm not going to start being able to work on a degree for another year. You have to be in the Navy for two years before you can start using tuition assistance. I'm not going to be able to work on getting a college degree for a long time. You're... You're, like, four years younger than me. You're, like... Yeah, you're, like, three, four years younger than me. You're gonna have a college degree six years before I do, man. Like, you're gonna be able to do so much. You're gonna be able to accomplish so much. You're gonna find a job doing something you probably don't enjoy. And hopefully you find a job that gives you a lot of off time so that you can sit there and just work on something you're actually passionate about. Because I feel like the big issue with you is passion. I feel like you are passionate for stuff, but the things that you're passionate for require a lot of work. And you just kind of give up on that passion a little bit. And you're like, I enjoy doing this, but I don't enjoy fucking it up, and I don't enjoy struggling with it, right? Oh, I hope they're not coming over here to tell me to stop talking, because I am being kind of loud. That's kind of just the nature of being drunk, though, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> There's like nobody in here right now, and it's like, super peaceful just being able to talk and be me and not have to worry about shit. Sometimes in life, you just kind of need that, right? You just kind of need to sit back and think, like, man, I just I don't want to worry about things anymore. I'm tired of worrying about things. I get that, you know? Like, that's, that makes sense to me. Also, this guy's getting close, and human human uh, arrow her, human arrow shooter thingy isn't as strong as elf arrow shooter thingy, so... Yeah, last said he played most of this game as, as a as human, so that sucks because humans are definitely not the best uh, archetype to be playing as. In the version of the game that I want to make, I, I envision uh, making different classes that have strengths in certain areas, and maybe if we do the campaign in the game that we're working on last that I'm making the art for, we could have it where certain levels might be better for different types. Like, for example, we could have a, le a level where there's a lot of a lot of burst damage, a lot of power damage. And it hits you really quick, and you're not ready for it. But if you use the humans, you can use that shield dude I was telling you about. Like, that dude that just stands there with the big shield. And he absorbs a lot of that damage, and he kind of just eats it, and he makes it look like it's not that big of a deal. He's so much better for you, because you get a lot more time to snowball and attack up behind him. And you can just do that, but with a, whereas if you use the mages, like, you, you have that damage, but you're probably going to get run over because you just can't build up an army quick enough, strong enough to stop it. Like, I like the idea that you can have different levels be better, uh, better versatilely used by different people, by different, by different races. But they're all equally balanced in their own sense. Like, if you were to go into a PvP setting, you would be able to, like use a certain combination. Like, for example, you might want to have a, a combination that revolves around obtaining a shit ton of mana. 
I wanted to create units that could turn enemy units into gold and stuff. Like, that's an alchemist unit that can turn enemy units into gold or absorb their life essence so that whenever you kill the enemy unit, you get extra mana for killing them. And then also, there's going to be a unit that, like, you can turn your own units into... Uh, so, like, you can, like, have until your own, when your own units die, whenever they die, they give you mana as well, so, like, it's basically just how much mana can I get in a short amount of time, so maybe you have a, uh, an economy-based unit, like, I was saying with, like, a mana generator on your castle, that just, it's, all it does is sit there and makes mana, but you could also have, like, an arrow shooter, or you could have, like, a self-defense matrix or something. And like you can kind of revolve around, do I want to have a really aggressive strategy where I send a million units at them within the first three minutes and try to run them over? Or do I want to have a more economical strategy where I can, like, sit there and I can just kind of hold my ground defensively and then unleash pure hell upon them, like... And I think the ability to add that kind of option in a multiplayer game like this, where you can actually kind of choose your playstyle and you can choose your strategy... Like, I think if you could do that and make that into a mobile experience, mobile is really important, because imagine, like, you're sitting on a long road trip with your cousin or your brother, and you're like, fuck it, I'm bored. Also, I knocked out my mana, Jesus Christ. And you're like, fuck it, I'm bored. I'm, like, kind of tired. And then your brother's like, I bet you I can whoop your ass with mages. And your brother's like, your, your younger brother's like, I bet you I can win. And you're thinking to yourself, like, man, I bet you I could try some extreme strategy. I wonder if it would work. It's worth a try. That's just, like... Whenever I was young, stuff like that would always be amazing. Like, man, I might not be able to beat this person because they are better than me, but if I tried some obnoxious strategy that probably isn't very well known, and it worked, imagine how cool that would be. And it sort of is that whimsical feeling that you can kind of get just from having the different avenues to travel. And obviously there's like a lot of balancing that comes into it, but once we create the characters and we put them together and we make the game balancing, it'll be easy. You just kind of got to make it, man. You got to make it work. I think that we can make it work. I have ambition. Obviously, I'm going to be gone for a long time. Once it's coming up in January, I'm going to be gone for a really long time. But once I come back, I'm going to have a, I'm going to have had a lot of free time to just kind of sit there and, and make video game art. And I'm going to have a lot of free time to just kind of do whatever the hell I want to do. Whoops. I hit this guy. There we go. Yeah, he's dead. Rip. I'm going to have a lot of free time during that time, so when I come back and I finally get to talk to you again, expect me to just give you a lot of shit. Like, I hope you're ambitious for that, because I am. Laz, I hope you're ambitious for a lot of things. I hope you're ambitious for, like... I hope you're ambitious for getting that bachelor's degree. I should, I definitely would be. I would be freaking... I would be whimsical. I would be so damn happy if I was about to get a bachelor's degree and freaking... I was like right there and I was like damn I've been trying so hard I've been going for so long trying to get this degree and there you are you're on the final cut like I hope you're excited for this man like you should be you you definitely deserve to be excited and like, I hope you're excited to hopefully make a video game that people like 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 I told you about the story with Flappy Bird people made Flappy Bird in like three days and they're millionaire now like they're making money for the rest of their life, they don't have to worry about work anymore because they, they got lucky. And they made something that people love. And, like, that's an ambition. That's an ambition that you have to be, like, that's something that, you like, as a video game developer, you have to just hope that you can get. And I found that living life, the best way that you can live life is to just have hope. Just believe that you can do something. It doesn't have to come true, but just the fact that you believe that it could is enough of a reason to pursue it anyway, you know? People kind of just give up hope, like, yeah, I'm going to lose motivation. And you always told me this at Heist, like, why do I want to make Heist? Why do I want to keep updating this game when no one's going to play it? Like, you have to be ambitious. You have to tell yourself, like, yeah, no one's going to play it, but what if I made the game look better and people played it? Because it looks better. Yeah, that's like, you've got to look at the, you've got to look at the brighter side of things. It's hard, I know it's hard. In the movies, you get fucked over so many times that you don't want to do anything anymore. I've been there. You just think to yourself, like, why am I, why am I even trying for? I'm just going to lose out. And I'm not going to benefit anymore. And you got to keep your head up. That's what it's about, man. The people who succeed in life are not the people who were lucky and got a lucky break. It's the people who continue to try and try to get lucky until they finally did. Even lucky people aren't really lucky. They're just 
hopeful and ambitious people that finally had that break. And very rarely does somebody get lucky on their first try. Guys, and I think that you could get lucky, and I don't think it's going to be your first try. Obviously, it wasn't because the hype went wrong, and only any of the other games have really wasn't been successful. But I think that if you really keep your mind in this game, you could be great. And I'm hopeful, and I know you're hopeful. playing Epic War and having a good time and honestly that's, that's life. What, what more could you ask for in life? Play a game that you think is fun? Play a game that you know somebody else is going to enjoy? Like I know you're going to watch this video I do. Uh, I know you're going to watch this video and be like man it's good to be on vacation. It's good to almost be done with school. It's good to be alive. And it's good to have a friend that I know will sit down and record a video for 15 minutes because he knows that I like it and because he enjoys the same kind of things I enjoy. Like good to have someone like that in your life. Also, I feel bad for the elf. I like the elf. I don't like fucking on the ass. You know, goddamn. It's so, it's so satisfying about seeing six to seven nights just trampling the enemy castle's ruins. Ugh, research. I have a little bit more, actually. Yeah. Um, we gotta do it one more time is orcs. Orcs. Probably, um, actually, I think humans might be my least favorite. I think orcs have a lot of charm that humans don't have, uh, especially when it comes to, like, spamming the fuck out of the enemy, and I honestly don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up a conversation long enough to make this uncut as well, because, you know, philosophical talk aside, I think that it's probably good to just kind of just we'll get this video over with, even though, Laz, I know if this video was five hours long, you'd watch all five hours of it, because you just love watching me play Epic One. 
and uh, you just love watching my videos in general, which is weird because I don't think anyone else does, so... <laughs> I don't know, you know, I uploaded my most recent video and it had more than two views, which means that there are people that watch my videos still. Even though it's probably just Urban and Cryptum and a bunch of people from Discord that, pe that think I'm a piece of shit because the things I said in the past. You know, and they, they just watch the video to see, oh my god, Shade's still alive, how's he doing? And like, you know, I look back at Discord sometimes and I'm like, damn, I said a bunch of stupid shit. I said a bunch of dumb shit. I think, I think anyone who's ever listened to me on Discord, who knew me on Discord, I think they can say without a doubt that I said a bunch of dumb shit in Discord and I said some shit that I should not have been proud of. Still recording the audio. Again, I'm not recording desktop audio. I think I am, and I just put music in the background. Where am I gonna get music from, you ask? I don't fucking know. I'll figure it out. And, like... Yeah, I, I, I did say some dumb shit. I said a lot of shit that I do regret saying. You know, I think that's just human nature that we make these mistakes, and... Discord's not the most forgiving place. You know, Discord's a, a land of I'm gonna pick my favorites, and I'm gonna stick with my favorites. And... You know, if you're not my favorite, so don't talk to me, don't look at me, this is a terrible place to be, right? I think that... I think that Discord was an overall negative experience for me. I liked the learning experience from it all. Like, I learned a lot about myself, especially. Now I realize that, you know, maybe Discord me is a big reflection of who me is as an actual person, right? And then I realized that I just didn't really like Discord very much, because... It's not a very pleasant place. There's a lot of opinionated people there that think my opinion's right and you can't have one. I think that that kind of mentality is fucked up. I think that if you want to have an opinion, you also have to respect someone else's opinion. That's just the nature of having an opinion. I don't think there's anything wrong with having an opinion. People seem to think that I'm a very biased and very unfair person, but honest to God, I think that, like... You know, if you want to do something, if you want to have something, go for it. But don't be surprised when people don't agree with you, you know? The world's about disagreeing. If everybody agreed with one another, there would not be anything relatively even close to conflict. Conflict exists because of disagreement. And for you to sit there and tell me that I have no right to argue with you is basically to sit there and tell me that there's, there shouldn't be any sort of argument or disagreement in the world whatsoever, that this world should be perfect and that kind of stuff shouldn't exist. It's, it's wrong, you know, these things aren't going to happen just because you wish they would happen. And it's just like equal rights aren't going to come to people who have radical opinions and beliefs just because you want them to. I'm not saying that your radical opinions and beliefs are wrong. I'm saying that it's wrong to think that you're going to get your way just because you want to have your way. You know, the biggest part of being an adult is realizing, you know, life ain't going to get handed to you. People aren't going to be nice to you because you tell them to. Which is why I always said on Discord, it's just really immature to sit there and get mad at me because I don't agree with you. That's immature. The mature thing to do would be to sit there and say, yeah, you disagree with me. I understand you disagree with me. But I also, you know, I disagree with you. Let's, let's just, let's have a, a, a civil discussion about why we're wrong. Maybe we can learn something about this. You know, arguing should be a learning experience. If you don't learn something from an argument, you've wasted your time. You've wasted your energy. You've wasted your essence. You've wasted... You've wasted, you've, you've basically just done not something for no reason. You argue because you don't understand the other person's perspective, or you don't agree with the other person's perspective. So the whole point of arguing should be that you're trying to come to a mutual consensus about that person's perspective. You're trying to understand why this person feels this way. You can disagree with somebody and, and still have serious respect for them. I mean that. You can. I have a lot of respect for people that I've argued with and that I genuinely don't agree with. There's a big difference between arguing and respecting someone. Like, I respected a lot of people's, on Discord, I respected a lot of the people's opinions. Like, I respect Orphan. I think Orphan does a lot of good things. I think Orphan has a overall pretty good sense of what he's doing in terms of, like, music and all that. Like, he's, he's, he's on top of his shit. He's definitely a talented individual. Definitely more so than I ever was at anything. 
you know, you know, I think that Orph is a pretty good person. It's just I disagree with his mentality on a lot of things. But he seemed to think that because I disagreed with him on certain things that it was fun, it was worth arguing about, and that now Orphan doesn't like me because of disagreements with a person that I didn't particularly respect. And I'm not going to say who she is, but I'm pretty sure that for people watching this video know who she is. I didn't particularly respect her because she just had a lot of complaining, and she had a lot of complaining and no problem-solving skills, you know? And there's a difference between complaining and trying to figure out why I'm complaining and why, what can I do to make it better, and complaining and just doing it for the sake of doing it. And I have no respect for people that complain just to complain. I'll admit, I've been there sometimes. I complain, and I just complain for no damn good reason. And, like... I don't know why I complain. Sometimes I sit back and I think, like, why am I bitching about this for? This is stupid. I should just try to make it better. And that kind of just comes to growing up, right? Kind of just realize, like, there ain't nothing I can do about it but live with it and try to work with it. You know, there, there's nothing wrong with sitting down and saying, like, yeah, I should be, I should, uh, I should, stop my throat's really dry. I should just try a little bit harder, maybe. Like, there ain't nothing wrong with sitting down and saying, yeah, maybe I should try a little bit harder. What's a slow unit? Trolls? Totems? Probably archers? What are the hotkeys for them? Y, y, T, and E. Yeah. It's like, don't be afraid to admit that you're wrong. And I know that this, this person I'm thinking of doesn't like admitting that they're wrong, especially when it comes to opinions. Because to be wrong is weakness in their eyes, you know? There ain't nothing wrong with being wrong. Because I've been wrong a million times, you know? I've been wrong so many times in my life that at this point, I've probably been wrong more than I've been right. But if that, even with that, I don't think any less of myself as an individual, you know? Like, drunk, drunk me sure to talk a lot, doesn't uh, I, I don't think of myself as anything less than a normal individual in life. Even though I made some mistakes and I said some things to some people that didn't deserve to hear those things, you know, I think that it was a learning experience, not just to me, but to that person. And I don't, I don't regret saying the things that I said. Would I say them again? Probably not, but do I regret saying them? And I think, again, it just kind of comes with a certain level of maturity, like, yeah, I feel a certain way, I think a certain way, I act a certain way. And at the time, it was really unprofessional and immature, and I shouldn't have acted that way. But it was a learning experience for me as much as it was for anybody else, and I'm glad that I made that mistake then, so I don't make that mistake now. Sometimes you just have to look at things on a more optimistic scale, like, yeah, things are kind of shit sometimes, but at least I worked on myself, and at least I came out a better person. I'd like to think I came out a better person. I'd like to think I came out a better person uh, from a lot of the dumb shit that I've said in the past. I mean, Laz even said before that he'd never seen me act so mature. You know, I don't really know what it means to be mature. And you know, he told me, I've never seen you act so mature before. And I said, thanks. I don't know what that really means, but... <laughs> Thank you. I just take a more realistic approach to it, maybe not be so happy about it. Play epic war and stand totems and just kill the enemy castle, you know? I'm gonna burn this black dragon to death, this race is gonna die. Uh, it's gonna die like the other dragon died, honestly. It's not nearly as scary of an enemy as the uh, angel was. I don't know what it was terrible. I literally skipped the chance when I was trying to see him with the mother of the angel. He's right here.
<laughs> like, I gotta give the orcs that, you know. The Odoms are pretty strong. Also, that's a lot of fucking dead trolls. Jesus Christ, that was a massacre. Anyway, uh, I wish I could keep this dragon in place longer so these arrows can be massacred. Oh, he's done that. Oh, my God. Welcome to hell, buddy. This is what it feels like. <laughs> One million arrows piercing the beach, and you're just sitting there like, well, I guess I'll die. And you're literally, he's literally just sitting there like, fuck me on. My HP is going to zero, and I'm not going to do shit about it. All my totems are still alive as well, and their backline is dead. Their black dragon is dead, and their red dragon is literally about to follow for it. Yeah, I get the fuck out of my, get the fuck out of my good nation game. Get the fuck out of my good commentary. I'm trying to play a game and have good time. You coming in, trying to get in my face. And also die, but that's what you can do. Be gone, thought. Yeah, fade away into mist. Fade away into mist. Yeah, that's what I fucking thought. Alright, well, uh, level 14. Pretty easy level. Uh, I wasn't expecting it to be anything more than that. I haven't even used a Titan unit yet. Come next level at the end, I'm gonna unlock Titan. Oh, I'm actually gonna go to hit these guys. Look, this one's gonna push this up. Does that hurt them at all? Can I even see? I can't see the health bars. Oh, well. 2018. This video is coming to an end, which is a release, because my throat fucking hurts. I've been talking too much. Uh, apparently OBS is holding desktop audio again. I, I don't know. I'm just gonna sit in the background and pretend that none of it is fucking happening. Hopefully the background audio isn't too loud. I know I kind of turned it up because it's been quiet the past couple of videos, but I can't hear it, so that's okay. Humans, elves, orcs. Close and save. That was level 14, chapter 14, light and dark. Next level is going to be 15 into the inferno, then 16 hell's gates, and then assuming this level, and then this level. Yay. Ah, I'll pop my fingers. That was fun. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please express to me in the comment section below how much you enjoyed it. Not that I really give a shit. You're probably only going to watch the first two. Oh, fuck. Excuse me. You're probably going to watch like the first two minutes and then skip to the end where I'm talking now and be like, yeah, that was a great video, Shady. You did great. Uh, or you're last and you actually watched all the... Uh, how long was this video anyway? This video is 47 minutes long. Maybe you're last and you watched all 47 minutes of this video and you're like, oh my god, I'm going to watch it three more times today because this commentary was so good. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. This has been Shade Messiah 9. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye, guys.